Hello, and welcome to another episode of iFix Old Stuff. Today, we're going to continue our series on amplifier troubleshooting by examining how to fix and repair some common mechanical faults. Let's get started. On the bench here, I have a base amp that came in for repair recently. Uh, the complaint was that the amplifier would occasionally cut out and sound like an active pickup with a dying battery. Now, intermittent repairs like this can be sometimes very hard to find. As well, as luck would have it, the device will work flawlessly on the bench and then die at the end user's house. If the issue is heat related, that can be very difficult to reproduce on the bench if you can't get the amplifier under test hot enough. In my previous video in this series, I demonstrated how to make a signal generator solution for testing. While running the amplifier, I did hear it sound strange for a second, but was hard pressed to reproduce the error. I started by cleaning the input and patching jacks with contact cleaner. Let's examine this schematic to see how these patching jacks work. What I have here on the screen is the uh, topology diagram of the amplifier I have currently on the bench. It's a common topology uh, for what we want to look at today. What I want to focus here on is this send and return section right here. It, this whole part here is the preamp. Uh, we have an equalization to give us bass and treble and however we want to set our tone. This section here is quite common. And what we have here, here, take a look at this signal for a second. It goes to the send jack, but it also connects to the return jack. What happens is, is this allows us to either, for example, I can plug a jack into the send and run out to perhaps a second amplifier or a mixing board. I can also use this to patch in perhaps an effects device, maybe an equalizer, compressor, or uh, reverb or something like that. When we have nothing plugged in, however, we have this connection here. Now, I did a video recently where I talked about input and output jacks. This specific connection, and I'll put it up on the screen here, is what we call a normally closed switch. When we have nothing plugged in, the signal travels through here, out, and then to the power amp section. However, when we plug into the return jack, we can actually interrupt that signal. This little section right here, it can be a really big point of failure. If this connection gets dirty or corroded, the amplifier will either cut out or could completely die. By the way, if you suspect the return jack to be an issue, take a cable and connect it between the send and the return. This will bypass the normally closed switch on the return jack. A quick solution to get you through a gig until you can get your amp repaired. After cleaning the jacks, I thought I had the problem fixed until I moved the amplifier and the problem reappeared. On closer inspection, I found that if I twisted the chassis, I could consistently replicate the problem. This usually indicates a broken solder connection. Instrument amplifiers experience a lot of movement, both from moving from the car to the gig to practice or whatever, and also from vibration when you're playing. You hear that? Interesting. Here, you see me testing the preamp section. Now what I'm doing here can be dangerous as you are doing these tests with the amp running. Make sure you use a red Sharpie and a piece of orange yoga mat for complete protection. The components that stand up from the board are likely culprits for broken solder joints, as they could vibrate while the amp is being played or moved. Broken solder joints on the potentiometer legs are also common. However, after extensive testing, I could not find a fault in the preamp section. I switched my focus to the power amp section. This section of the amp is mounted very securely, and pressing and wiggling the components on the board revealed nothing. Then, once I got my 50-year-old eyes close enough to the board, I found it. Two of the power transistors had broken solder joints. The holes on this style of board are called plated through, where the connection travels through one side of the board, through the hole, and to the other side. Therefore, I needed to check the other side of the board to verify if the connection was broken on both sides. Now, either way, if you see a joint like this during repair, even if it's not the culprit, just stop and fix it, just for longevity. As you can see here, this indeed was the issue. Some quick solder fixed the problem. Having some of the transistors occasionally disconnecting themselves means that the push-pull circuit that this design of amplifier uses would be out of balance. Now when this happens, it's a very distinctive sound. 
And if you hear it during a repair, try to commit it to memory, because it may save you some time in the future. Now, I could begin the laborious process of putting all of the washers, nuts, and knobs back on, which is my least favorite part of the job, but it's got to be done. Then, I put the device into final test, and we're ready to go. So there you go. That's a look at some common mechanical repairs you may run into when troubleshooting instrument amplification. I'd just like to take this time to invite you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.